Hey everyone, today I'm going to be going over all of the Asian condiments that I always have in my fridge no matter what. And I'm a Korean American so a lot of these are going to be Korean, but there are some that are not um, that I still incorporate into my everyday cooking um, very frequently. So in no particular order, but maybe at the beginning I'll go over some of my favorites first. So this is an all-American one, I think. Um, but ketchup, I have to have Heinz tomato ketchup at all times. I will put ketchup on almost anything, to be honest. I am a ketchup fiend and I just, I like the sweetness. I like the tomato-y, you know, sugar that you get with ketchup. And, you know, ketchup actually is getting used more and more in Asia. I think a lot of times um, I see this pop up in Japanese cuisine as well. But if you've ever had omurice, which is like an omelet style dish over some sort of like fried rice or just even normal rice, um, white rice. A little bit of ketchup drizzled over top, really, really, really good. And sometimes I mix it with some of these other ones here. So um, Heinz tomato ketchup, definitely a plus. All right, next is soy sauce. So this is, okay, I understand the soy sauce aisle or section of the grocery stores is extremely overwhelming. And to be honest, the major differences between them probably isn't even that big, but there are some differences that you should know and I'm not even the most knowledgeable on this probably, but I always just go for an all-purpose soy sauce. This one says all-purpose right here. Um, in Korea, there are a couple different types. Um, there's usually like a seasoned soy sauce and then a kukkanjang or a soup soy sauce um, that usually is used only when you're like making broths and stuff. It's um, seasoned a little bit differently and a little bit of a different strength um, in how strong it is. So I wouldn't use that if you're going to be dipping things or, um, you know, eating it on the side straight. And usually it'll have like a picture of um, a broth or something like that. Um, but if you're not sure, I would just go with, you know, anything that says brewed all purpose on it. Um, this one says premium soy sauce. I honestly don't really know what that means, but I have particularly really been liking this one. It's from O Food, uh, premium soy sauce. Sesame oil. This is a staple for sure in Korean cuisine. Um, this one I got at just like Walmart or something, so it's not the brand I normally get. Normally, if you grew up in an Asian household, you know that there are like those huge tins of sesame oil. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, living alone, I would not get that because sesame oil can go rancid. But um, I usually get them in small bottles from the Asian grocery store. They're ones that um, have the yellow lid. That's the one that I normally really like. But um, the key with sesame oil is this is a finishing oil. Okay, a lot of people cook with this and that's fine. But I would not be cooking with this at the beginning. So don't like mix this in with your, you know, cooking oil, canola oil, whatever you, you're using because it has a very low smoke point. I believe meaning that it sort of destroys the flavor if you cook it over too high of a heat so always add this in at the very end um, or you don't even have to cook it i really like this over rice with eggs and our next one gochujang um, so chang means paste and gochu is pepper so this is like the traditional like national korean pepper paste i really like the ones that you can get in a bottle like this because it's so easy all you have to do pop open the lid squirt some out, and then you're done. Sometimes they'll come in a tub, um, and when you get them in a tub, it's kind of different because these are mixed in with other things like vinegar, sugar, things like that to make it a little bit more pourable. Um, the tub is gonna be the really classic um, and traditional gochujang, but it's a lot pastier, and so you have to use like two spoons, really. So you, you know, spoon it out, scrape it off the spoon with another spoon and you know there's a time and place for that that's usually what i go to if i'm making large batches of something um but honestly most of the time i'm just like pouring this over rice um with an egg and sesame oil so these two together is like a match made in heaven um but if i'm doing that i always prefer the bottled kind it's always right next to the tubs in the grocery store in the asian grocery store and this brand specifically i really like okay next Samjang. So I only recently discovered that you can get these in a squeeze bottle like this. It's really nice to have in a squeeze bottle because then I just get, you know, whatever veggies I'm eating or meat or lettuce or whatever, and then squirt some out just on the side of the plate. And then you have it and you don't have to wash like an additional thing. You don't have to get your spoons out. We all know the struggle of scraping everything off the spoons and then you have to wash the spoons and everything. Love, love, love this. 
For those of you who don't know what this is, this is a more traditional um, sam sauce. So sam means wrap. So it's any type of wrap. The traditional sam is like um, a red leaf lettuce with some sticky rice in it and then, or without rice, and then like grilled pork or kalbi or something like that. And then you put a little bit of this samjang in with it and then make a little lettuce wrap. And it's like, you know, a point of care lettuce wrap. Sorry, that's like a very medical term of me. And so you sort of like make the wrap, you know, put all your things in it, put some samjang in, and then you just sort of eat that whole. Um, and what this is, is a combination of, let me go get the other thing. So I had to get this because I wouldn't consider this something I always have in my fridge, but this is tenjang. Tenjang is a traditional Korean bean paste, um, <clears throat> and it's akin to miso, but much stronger in flavor. It's definitely more potent, a lot more fermenty, um, and it's used to make soups and stews most of the time. But you basically, for a traditional samjang, you'll take half gochujang, half sam, or half um, tenjang, and then put in like minced garlic, green onion, sesame oil, um, some sugar maybe, thin it out a little bit, and then it becomes this absolutely incredible dipping sauce. I will say it's pretty strong in flavor as well, but give it a shot if you can pick it up, if you can find the bottled kind, even better. But if you don't find the bottled kind, let me just tell you about the color. So most traditional like Korean um, changs or pastes will come in a tub like this. And so the red tub is going to be gochujang. The brown or sort of like, I don't know what you'd call this, burnt orange um, color will be, burnt beige, will be tenjang. And then the green tubs will be samjang. That's traditionally how the entire market, I guess, has conformed to color these tubs, which is really nice. Moving on, we have rice wine vinegar. So this one, I don't use very often, but I always have in the fridge. Honestly though, if I don't even have this, any type of vinegar, you know, even just normal white vinegar uh, that you should have um, at home is very easily substitutable for rice wine vinegar. But the thing I like about rice wine vinegar is it straddles this, um, it straddles the like more citrusy vinegars and white vinegar very well. I feel like it has that freshness that for example, like apple cider vinegar has without having the fruitiness of it. That said, I substitute apple cider vinegar all the time for this. And sometimes I actually prefer that it gives that little bit of fruitiness. So, but this is a very traditional, you know, Asian vinegar. Okay, next, mirin. So mirin, M-I-R-I-N, that's how you spell it in English. Um, more traditionally Japanese, I believe, it's sort of a like fermented, or I don't know if it's fermented, but it's like a sweet cooking sake, essentially. Um, and I found this Korean version, so I decided to just pick up the Korean one, and I, I have been, really been enjoying this, but Korean, Japanese, get either one. This is a, definitely a staple because I love sweetening any of my um, quick salads or quickles with mirin instead of spoon, like, you know, granulated sugar. I do that all the time as well, but granulated sugar, you know, you have to either dissolve it or wait for it to dissolve. This, in addition to, you know, already having a dissolved sweetener, it brings that slight um, airy, watery sweetness that you find in sake that is really, really nice, especially if you're cooking with this, um, because it's sort of, it's sort of like deglazing the pan with white wine, but it's a sugary sake instead of that. So I would try um, getting this, you know, I, I am kind of anti cooking wine already anyway. So if you are sort of using that, you know, substitute with this, substitute with mirin. All right, next, venturing over to um, Southeast Asia, we're going to be talking about fish sauce. In my opinion, Red Boat is the best that I've tried. It is very like known as the mainstream um, premium fish sauce. So I just always have a very tiny bottle of this, lasts in the fridge a very long time. And this is, for me at least, one dash use. So one or two dashes only. Usually if I'm cooking like a lot of veggies or something that needs more flavoring in it, I'll pair fish sauce, soy sauce, um, and like maybe one of these next condiments with it. And that usually creates a very nice and flavorful um, seasoning without getting too saucy. So that's when I really like to use fish sauce. 
Um, just since we're talking about fish sauce, oyster sauce is sort of my next staple. This also lasts in the fridge a long time. So I sort of try to have these two or replenish them every couple months um, because I do find myself wanting them at random times. But oyster sauce, okay. This is the secret to a lot of those Thai noodle dishes that you have that you're like, wow, this is so umami in a very different kind of way. So if you've ever had pad siu, which is, um, I don't actually know if there's like a traditional English or like anglicized title for it, but like drunken noodles, uh, pad ki mao, is it spicier cousin? They use a lot of oyster sauce in there. Oyster sauce is very hard to describe. I'm not sure. Hmm. Let's take a smell. It just, it smells very fishy, but in a more canny umami kind of way, which doesn't sound pleasant, but trust me, it has this sugary, glazy sweetness that once you mix it with something more astringent um, and salty like fish sauce um, and something a little bit more rounded sweeter like soy sauce, it comes together in that traditional like or at least traditional American Thai sweet sauce that you get. So my favorite way to use this is if I'm making either fried rice or uh, noodles and you know I want a thicker glazier sauce then I'll put some of this in. It makes a really, it brings that nice umami kick I will say. All right then let's move on to sriracha. I would say this is the most famous sriracha brand I guess. Um, but I, I don't know if there's like production issues or something. I didn't look too far into it, but I know these are at a premium right now. Other Srirachas, I have tried them all, you know, at least that I can find, and this is the best, but any type of more vinegary, thick, spicy hot sauce needs to be in my fridge, and that's, you really can't get them with American hot sauces, so some sort of Asian hot sauce um, like this is my preferred, and this is very different from, for example, gochujang. Gochujang is more of a rounded, sweeter, um, thicker consistency and taste, whereas this is a lot more thin, um, more acidic, and more of a punchy heat. Gochujang can get very spicy, I will say, but they're different spices. This is a rounded heat. This is a punchier spice, I would say. Next, any type of chili crisp. I've... <laughs> I know this one's going viral, the Fly by Jing, and they have so many different flavors and I want to try them all, but honestly, I feel like chili crisps are one of those products where a lot of people do them really well. So if you guys have any suggestions, let me know your favorite chili crisp. And while you're at it, let me know your staple condiments that you always have to have in your fridge, regardless of what ethnicity or nationality you are. I'm very curious because I am a sauce fiend. I'm always on the hunt for more sauces and I can never get enough, but chili crisp is a I would say this is one of the most versatile finishers of all time. Like even for non-Asian dishes on toasts, on salads, like, oh my gosh, the other day I made a watermelon, like feta-esque salad, put some chili crisp on top. Absolutely, absolutely so delicious. This is a very good contrasting finisher. So anything that's sweet or cold or refreshing or kind of bland, you know, like rice. Put some chili crisp on top this stuff can elevate or completely transform a dish into a new thing so um i always have some and then lastly miso have to have miso and then i always get the light mild miso that's just my preferred i <clears throat> have cooked with the dark before i'm sure there are like specific use cases for each type of miso but um primarily when i'm using miso is making glazes and occasionally making miso soup but most of the time what I'm doing is taking some miso um, <clears throat> watering it down with a little bit of like some sort of spice or some sort of honey like sweet honey type sweetener maybe even mirin something like that and then making a glaze for for example salmon or some type of white fish I love 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 miso and let me tell you um, I learned this from my sister but who learned it from some other chef but miso is a very good salt substitute, but it brings in that extra level of herbiness um, and let's see, and sort of earthiness, right? So it's not just salt. So a lot of times you can substitute miso for salt to get another layer of depth of flavor. And some people are gonna call me sacrilegious for this, but I didn't come up with this. I just started doing it is adding this to your tomato sauces. Um, so a lot of the Italian sauces 
that require a, that are a tomato base i put some miso in and you would never know you would never know but it adds that extra depth of flavor that is really really nice this is a good you know condiment to experiment not even condiment i should say this is a good paste to experiment with in terms of salt substitutes but okay that's everything so i hope that helps elucidate some of maybe the basics that I would recommend having in your fridge, but I'm sure it looks different for everyone. And I'm so curious to know what your guys' staples are. Um, in future videos, I'll probably try to showcase how I use them a little bit more, but trust me, like cooking, I feel like is all about experimenting. And once you know the general flavor profile that something brings, you can experiment pretty successfully. So I hope this video helped elucidate that as well. Um, yeah, I'll see you in the comments.